Today, I have a question that comes up regularly in my work, and that question is a really important one. Is AI good for work, or is AI bad for work? And this is a question that is hard to answer because in theory, we could just say, oh, it's good for some people and it's bad for others. But I think it's more complex than that. And I thought it's worth having a brief discussion about the things that I talk with other leaders, other workers and other people that we work with as they navigate this change. When we talk with um, leaders who have departments or they have teams that they manage, they themselves are trying to grapple with AI because they care about their teams. They care about their groups of people that they work with and they wanna understand, is this gonna be good for my teams or is it gonna be bad for my teams and my departments? I have leaders and organizations who are asking, hey, is this good for our business, our industry, or is this bad for our business and industry? So it is a complex question to ask. I would start with explaining why AI can be quite bad for work. With what are the challenges with AI in the work that we do? What are real world examples of challenges we run into? Now, the first question I always get from pretty much everyone, whether they're a business leader or an individual who's working in an organization, is they say, is AI going to take my job? Is AI going to take my work away? And the truth is, AI is not going to necessarily take your job. What's going to happen is people who know how to use AI and who know how to work with AI, they're going to take the jobs of those who do not. So then it becomes a question of, are you going to learn AI? Are you going to learn how to collaborate with it and use it in your work? Or are you going to defer or delay that to potentially your detriment? The second part of this, and it is an exhilarating and terrifying prospect, is what is the right pathway, and when should I adopt AI myself in my organization, in my team? And this is a tricky thing because, to be honest, mistakes are going to be made. And if you use something like this, if you change things and use AI, those mistakes could have pretty significant consequences. But just like before, there is an easy answer here. The truth is, it's great that OpenAI and others are making AI accessible to more people. Because while it is terrifying and exhilarating, right? While it is those things, it's also something where today the scale and consequences of those mistakes is much less than it will be in the future. And that's important because we're all going to mis make mistakes and we're all going to learn, whether we're leaders or whether we're the individuals. Now, it's also important to understand that AI is an exponential, nonlinear technology. And it is growing very rapidly, as are the use cases and how we use it. So there's also an argument that getting involved and using AI and learning it now isn't just better because, again, the consequences are less because of how un less interconnected and interwoven it is in our businesses and our work. But also the consequences are a little bit better because it's easier to grasp. Yes, it can be daunting, but you could learn a lot about how AI can be used in your work, in your discipline area today. It might be much harder to navigate that in the future when the ways in which we work with AI become more and more rich and robust. So I think that's another reason to potentially motivate it. So the first, I think, takeaway that we're getting here is, hey, Maybe it's really important for us to all adapt and learn and dig into AI in our work today, as soon as possible. And I think that that's true. I think that's a pretty safe assumption. Now let's talk about the other challenge with this, which is we mentioned earlier, is AI gonna take my job? And the truth is AI, as we mentioned, with another collaborator is going to take your job if you're not invested in it. But what if you do invest in AI? Is that still going to reduce the number of jobs? Does that mean that I might lose my job because I'm not in that category of people that are not laid off in that scenario? And the truth there is it's much more complex than I think people realize. In our space, we work in employee experience, we work in digital technologies like collaboration, communication, Microsoft 365. Um, and while Copilot and these tools are gonna improve you know, and be accessible to everyone, the reality is they're gonna provide support and offset especially certain tasks where you become two times or more times effective than you were previously without AI support. And we see this today. If you look at Copilot, 
for uh, coding, right? Copilot's been around for a while, and we look at the data there, we can see very consistent results, things like two or 2.5x more efficient, or more effective uh, coding and uh, efficiency, higher quality product, right? We can see that being done in less time with the support of AI. And those who don't use it, right, when we do those tests, they're having a lo much longer time uh, making that, they're less complete in their work, and arguably the quality is less as well. And so in that scenario, it's important to understand that there's this really important cost premium that we have when work is split across multiple people. That alone is daunting because if, hey, if someone can do two or 2.5 times the amount of work, doesn't that mean that there's gonna be less work for all of us? Well, maybe not. We'll come back to that. But at the end of the day, it does mean that when you have so much interconnected work where we work with collaborating with others, where so much of our work today is split across two or more people, well, that has a bigger impact because when you take one person and you make them two times more effective on work that was split across two or three people, what you're actually reducing is communication overhead. You're reducing miscommunication because they don't need to work across as many people. And that has a much higher premium and a much stronger value proposition that could lead to three or four times the cost efficacy wise amount of work being done. And that can lead to some significant job loss in the marketplace and even in your own organization. And so this is something that ha should be warranted to be worried about. And yes, adopting and embracing technology now is going to um, help you be more successful and less affected in the near term, but this creates this other underlying challenge. Now, as I mentioned with each of these challenges, I wanna provide at least a positive perspective. And the positive perspective is that in the past, when we had a challenge like this, it led to some pretty positive outcomes. If you take something like uh, the way technology has changed organizations, the advent of the press, the printing press, or you know, pen and paper, arguably even before that, led to the spread of societal literacy. And that led to new demands, the demands that most of us, many of us are employed on uh, addressing today in information work, in you know, uh, work within offices and places like that. And as that evolved from printing press to typewriters, it created new opportunities. Yes, it displaced some work, but it led to new things like the spread of systematic management. And that led to standard standardized documents and standardized documents led to new logistical and management uh, roles and jobs. And if we look at um, the spread of information management with computers, well, that led to electronic documents and digital work. And if we look at um, the the introduction of the int internet, um, the introduction of mobile apps and mobile access, those things led to the removal of communication barriers, removal of the need for presence in our offices and our work, uh, you know, less access barriers. And yeah, there's consequences to each of these, not just in jobs, but there's consequences in society, right? You know, the always on uh, issues that come with that, but it led to a lot of really positive things like flexible work and remote work. And it led to, you know, the ability for us to be able to benefit from connections and discussions with family and friends from far distances or being able to stay in touch with colleagues and work with people in specialized industries and things like that that led to again i think an uplift for society and people overall and with ai it is something that's going to lead to as i mentioned most likely some job loss but it's also something that removes barriers for skills a lot of times we think of how much work maybe I've spent learning PowerPoint and learning PowerPoint is not something that's going to be as important later because the APIs in Copilot today, the way Copilot works with these, um, these tools, it can use APIs and understand them and it can use them better than you and I can. And so that means that over time, those, you know, 200 or 2000 um, different commands that exist in PowerPoint, it can design and build better PowerPoints than I can. Now I'm still going to be a collaborator in that. I'm still contributing to it. I'm still benefiting from that collaboration as well. But the reality is that tool, uh, this AI is going to potentially do many of those tasks better than I can. And that means that a lot of these um, task-based skills become less and less important over time. And that leads to new opportunities in the same way that the lead of the, the lead in for societal literacy created new opportunities, the lead for reduction in skill barriers, hyper-personalization, the importance of perspective, these are all things that lead to new opportunities with AI. So AI 
is kind of bad for work, depending on where you are, but there's ways to make it a little bit less bad for you. And there's certainly ways that it could be really good in the future for work. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about just before we kind of close this thought is, is AI bad for work? Because I've heard that AI does some things pretty poorly. And I think that this is a really interesting and important one because, you know, today algorithms are ubiquitous and they're used in our everyday life. And I think it's fair to say many of them are racist or sexist or gendered or trivializing or they stoke division and they amplify bias, either intentionally by malicious actors or because of the data in which they are trained on. And this is something that is important to understand. But to be honest, all of us are trained on data, aren't we? Humans are trained on data sets too. And I think we're starting to recognize the, the unacknowledged uh, risks that come with our data that we either learn ideologically wise within our own families and within our societies or within our own organizations. You'd be surprised at how many organizations, when we start to use these AI tools, we actually, because we're careful about this now and we look for responsible pathways, we find that there are biases in the data leading to a reduction, hopefully, of risks of biases in things like recruitment and other places where we might use these tools. And I think that that's an advancement because AI is not self-aware, but AI is making us more self-aware. And as AI makes us more self-aware, it allows us to think about false binaries like male or female, masculine or feminine, straight or gay, black or white, left or right, us or them. We think of these false binaries because AI doesn't have a sense, you know, it's non-binary. It doesn't have a sense of of one or the other, right? That's the data that tells uh, it what to, to understand and what uh, observations to make. And if we can think of how we can get rid of these false binaries in our own work, in our own lives, um, that can typically lead to an improved result for everyone. Now, the last one uh, that I wanted to talk about is AI good or bad. And I think, you know, with that, with that uh, AI making us more self-aware, I would say the long term is probably AI is very good for work because it should lead to more inclusive and better work representation and a lot of less risk for biasy. But in the short term, AI is kind of bad for work if we're not being responsible with our application of it. The last one I want to talk about is hallucinations. And hallucinations are a problem with AI today. If you've never experienced this, it's really easy to test yourself. Go and type into, you know, ChatGPT or something like that. You know, type in, you know, uh, create a poem for me or create a, um, a song where every letter or every word starts with the letter E. And as you do that, it'll create something. And you'll find, even with GPT-4, it, you'll find that it doesn't always do this right. Sometimes there's other things in there. And what you can do then is you can say to it, hey, did you meet the assignment? Because I asked you to create a song where every letter on every, or sorry, every word on every line, uh, you know, has the letter E to start. And it'll tell you, oh, I made a mistake. And this is an interesting thing because new research is showing us that simple things like adding reflection right? I'm not going to get into uh, the impact of storage and other things. Just adding reflection to um, things like GPT and other uh, models like this, uh, it adds a lot of value because it really reduces the number of hallucinations. And so do I think that AI is bad for work? Sure, because AI can make mistakes. And if we don't know that it can hallucinate and we don't know how to, in the short term, um, help it correct itself, help it double check its work, right, then there's a good chance that we're going to make mistakes. And as I mentioned, while they're lower risk, lower impact today, they're still mistakes, right? And we want to avoid those. On the other side, AI is quite good because over time, if you don't know this, we make mistakes all the time. This hallucination thing is a bit AI centric, but it's also something we do. A lot of times we use the information we know and we make uh, an assumption. We say, we think this is what is true. We often misremember things as well. And so while it's not identical, it is true that if AI makes less and less and less and gets so effective that hallucinations are such a rare occurrence that we can address them very easily, then it means that AI can make a lot less of these kinds of mistakes than we make ourselves. And again, that just leads to AI being better for work instead of worse for work. I leave it up to you because the truth is whether AI is good for work or bad for work is up to us. If we embrace it and adopt it, and we learn about it, and we help navigate this journey together, AI is gonna be very good for work. If we don't do that, if we leave it in the hands of technologists, or we defer it, and we say, we're gonna deal with it later, we're gonna learn about it later, then that's very bad for work. So I hope this has helped you navigate this really complex discussion, is AI good or bad for work?